parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in your heart. This is he that receiveth seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and unknown with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also bear fruits and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. Now look what he says. If I don't understand the word, the Bible says, that the enemy will come and try to snatch it from me. Amen? And when it comes down to knowing that God wants to help you, if you sit there and let, and let the enemy come and bombard your mind with thoughts that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't care for you, that he's not concerned about your situation, the enemy will snatch this word out of your heart. Amen? Then he said, if you sit here and get happy without getting an understanding, it's okay to get happy. But you got to get understanding. He said, because if you if you shouting in church, running in church, screaming in church, and all is done it, done it, done it. If that's all that's going to make you happy, when tribulation comes your way, you won't know how to handle it. Why? Because you receive the word with, with joy, the Bible says. I'm trying to get you to a place where you get understanding. So that when situations or circumstances come in your life, you know it's in the word of God that God's going to help me. Right. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Now, go to John chapter number 6. John chapter 6. While you turn to John chapter number 6, let me give you a def definition of help. Help is the providing of ability. God bless you. Assistance. Assets. Affection. Advice. Or whatever is necessary to accomplish a task. Or to satisfy a need. Now, we know that God is able. Right? Yes. Amen. You, you know you hear in church all the time, God is able. Well, his ability is never in question. Right. Amen. I just need to know that his ability will help me in my situation. Then we said that it's the providing of assets. God owns it all. Amen. The Bible says that the cattle of a thousand hills belong to the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord. He said, even you belong to God. So God, if, you need, if I need some assets, all I have to do is go to God. See, see that's the fallacy. That's the fallacy that people, people uh, uh, don't, don't get. Is that they think that they have to go out and do things to, to gain assets. I don't have to go out and do things to gain assets. All I have to do is go to the one who have all assets in the first place. Yeah. Amen. And God says, if you would hearken diligently to do what I tell you to do, I'm going to make that stuff just chase you down. You don't have to chase the blessings. The blessings are supposed to be chasing you. Amen. 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 Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, I told you how to go. John chapter 6. Look at verse number 38. John chapter 6. Verse number 8, 38, 38. Now, in this, I want you to see that Jesus himself came to demonstrate this help, this love of God that, that God wants to share with us. Amen. John chapter number 6, look at verse number 38. John chapter 6, verse number 38. Look what it says. Fire came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which he has sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth, him, believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. 
Jesus said, I came to do the will of my Father. Now, I need to see whether or not Jesus helped anybody, and if he helped anybody, he must help me. Amen. If Jesus showed compassion to anybody in a negative situation, listen to me now, and he said he came to do the will of his Father, then he must do the same thing for me in my situation. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's see if Jesus helps somebody. Go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. If I'm facing a situation of lack, if I see that Jesus helped somebody in their lack situation, then if I find myself in lack, then, then I, all I have to do is call on the same God that helped these people with lack. Because that's what I'm going to show y'all. That, that they had a situation at a wedding feast. They ran out of stuff. <laughs> and Jesus' mama went to him and said, Jesus, can you help them? Oh, I get to John chapter 2. Look at verse number 1. John chapter 2. Look what it says. Watch this. And the third day... That was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto, unto him, they have no wine. Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he said unto you, what? Do it. And that was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of, of the Jews, containing two or three forkins apiece. <clears throat> Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then, they, uh, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. <clears throat> now, now let, let me give you a revelation that, that I'm, not, I'm not talking about Boone's form. <laughs> I, ain't talk, I ain't talking about Tickle Pink. In the in Bible day, wine was a represent, representation of joy. These people lost their joy. And Jesus' mama came and said, son, they need their joy back. Can you help them? <laughs> y'all, see, I don't, I, I, I don't went deep on y'all. I was talking about took a pink, and I went to joy. Y'all like, what are you talking about? See, see that, that was their problem. The problem was not about wine. The problem was about they lost their joy. And the mama said, Jesus, I know that you can restore the joy to them. As a matter of fact, that's what David said. Restore the joy of my salvation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ooh, I'm just getting happy by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to calm down. So y'all, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to bring y'all with me. Amen. You know, it, it's almost like it's almost like an a, a ox that's, that that. The, the master wants to tread out the, uh, the, the field. But if they don't hook the, 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 the machine up to the ox, he's going to go without them. And see, I, I'm the ox right now. And y'all better hook on because I'm going to go somewhere. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, about to, I'm about to tread the field. Amen. But, 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 but anyway, but anyway they, had a, they had a lack, a lack of joy. And Jesus' mama said, Jesus, I know that you can handle this situation. So those of you who are struggling with, with uh, anxiety, you're struggling with stress, you're struggling with lack of peace, know that Jesus can help you in that situation. Amen. Go to uh, John, 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 John. Mm, mm, mm. Chapter number mm. <laughs> 